For the final part of today's lecture, I want to do a review of the introduction to uh, flow over 3D finite wings that was covered towards the end of the fundamentals course. So here's a picture that might look familiar. We have a rectangular wing. There's the middle. The wing area is S. It has chord C. And the span of the wing is B. This is looking down, this is the top view. The infinity is coming in like this. A streamline on the top surface will tend to do something like this, whereas a streamline on the bottom surface will do just the opposite. Why is that? Well, as soon as we look at the side view of the airfoil, uh, sorry, the front view, we can see why. What does this mean? Bottoms moving out, tops moving in, it means there's a net flow like this over the wingtips. Basically there's a vortex, tr a trailing vortex created at each wingtip. This induces something called a downwash, which is a downward vo net velocity downstream of the airfoil. And this changes the effective angle of attack by an induced angle of attack, alpha i. So the net effects of this air that spills over from the lower surface of the airfoil to the upper surface. Why again does it spill over? Well, it has to. There's no reason that it won't. Here we now have a single point in space right on the wingtip. The pressure must be the same on the lower and upper side here. No pressure differential can be sustained. So over here we have high pressure and up here we have low pressure because that's how airfoils work. Um, but now at the wingtip, nothing's preventing some of the air from spilling around. So that's exactly what happens as flow naturally tends to flow from high pressure to low pressure. We get this tip vortex created um, at the end of the wings. The net effect is a reduction in lift compared to just taking the lift per unit span and multiplying it by the span. It also creates what we call induced drag, EI. So this is very different than in two dimensions, where inviscid flow predicts zero drag. Here we can still have an inviscid flow model and get non-zero drag with a 3D wing because of the induced drag effect. So the total drag in reality is the induced drag plus drag due to skin friction, plus pressure drag. So these two are viscous effects. Whereas this is the induced drag. And if we look at this on a coefficient basis, basically the viscous drag coefficient in 3D um, for moderate angles of attack will be the same as in 2D. But we now, in addition, have this induced drag component that we need to take care of. So now that we're talking about a three-dimensional finite wing, we need to start thinking about how the lift is distributed along the surface of the wing. So a wing that may have cross section like this. So this is again looking at it uh, from the front. Here's the y direction. This is b over 2, this is negative b over 2. The lift distribution can't be flat because as we said, no pressure differential can be supported at the wingtips. Therefore the lift must go to zero at both wingtips. Typically it'll be the largest. It's drawn very well. 
it'll be the largest in the center and reduce as we go towards the, the wingtips. And so this is some lift per unit span distribution, which we can just write as rho infinity v infinity times some circulation distribution. So in general, um, the cord, the angle of attack, and even the airfoil section can vary along the span, the span. So there has to be some kind of, you know, general lift distribution and therefore a general distribution of circulation uh, that provides the overall lift. Now, there's an analytical method to get the effects of the three-dimensional effects on lift, which is called lifting line theory. And this is very useful for preliminary design. We'll use it extensively in this course. Here, we replace the wing with bound vortices. So these are uh, vortices which move along with the wing. Basically, here's the wing. There's going to be a trailing vortex behind each one. trail off to infinity. And we'll have some jump. This is sort of showing a crude coarse discretization. Where there's going to be some D gamma 1. Then another step, we go d gamma 1 plus d gamma 2. And in the middle, we have d gamma 1 plus d gamma 2 plus d gamma 3. And then it goes back down again. Here's negative d over 2 at this end and d over 2 at this end. All along this lifting line, the vorticity is in the same direction, though it increases in magnitude as we go towards the center. And then these vortex legs are on the outside. So this is d gamma 1, d gamma 2, d gamma 3. Here are the direction switches. As it must to be consistent with the directions of these uh, vortices bound on the lifting line. So from this we can come up with uh, what's called the fundamental equation of Prantl's lifting line theory. which is big and complicated and looks like this. Luckily, this is one of these equations that one has used to develop some theory you never really have to apply directly because this doesn't look like a very fun equation to apply at all. Four. Let me roll. There's a D over 2, the D over 2. D gamma, dy. I go y not minus y, dy. Now we can solve this equation to get the lift distribution, the total lift, and the induced drag. So the lift per unit span at y naught is infinity v infinity gamma of y naught, or y naught is just our span wise coordinate. And the total lift L is rho infinity v infinity times the integral of negative v over 2 to v over 2 of the distribution. Therefore, the lift coefficient is of the whole wing. Now it's capital C, capital L, because this is for the whole wing rather than an airflow section. Oh, 
that can be obtained just using the definition of lift coefficient. And the induced drag is rho infinity v infinity integral from negative v over 2 to v over 2. The circulation distribution and the alpha, uh, the angle of attack, in, the induced angle of attack. So you can see that the key to getting all of these is getting the circulation distribution gamma of y naught. So a general solution does exist. And we'll talk about this uh, next time um, as we discuss general lift distributions. But for today, as part of this review, we're only going to look at a special case, which is the elliptical lift distribution. Where we say if there's an elliptical distribution of the circulation, then if we posit this as a solution to uh, this governing equation, what properties will the resulting lift distribution have? So it'll have the following properties. Downwash is constant. The downwash W is negative gamma naught over 2D. The induced angle of attack, which is gamma naught over 2D, the infinity is also constant. And so, we can write that the induced angle of attack is CL over pi AR, where AR is the aspect ratio of the wing, V squared over S. And what we get for the induced drag is that it's CL squared over pi AR. So this is induced drag here now. We see that the induced drag is in fact drag due to lift. We also see that high aspect ratio leads to low induced drag. Finally, how do we actually achieve this elliptical lift distribution? We get it by actually having an elliptical chord distribution. So a top view is a wing. It looks something like this. And the aircraft that comes to mind that most uh, closely approximates this sort of airflow geometry is the Spitfire wing. Next time, we'll start looking at what happens if we have any other kind of lift distribution.